Welcome to Adventures with a Very Small Lathe. In my most recent Watchmaker's faceplate video I needed a tap follower to make sure the threads attaching the two parts together were dead straight. I haven't been able to buy a tap follower small enough for the chucks on my small machine, so I thought I'd try making one based on the design Phil Desjardins and Pierre Baudry made for Keith Fenner's What's in Your Box tool giveaway. I sketched out the rough dimensions I thought would work, decided to make it from silver steel and try making something with the ER20 collet chuck for the first time. My design isn't quite the same, but that's down to me misunderstanding Phil and Pierre's videos, not because I intentionally modified it. My first step was to clean up a length of 10mm stock for the tool body. I then centre drilled one end and drilled out three diameters for the main features. First is a 5mm through hole for the tooltip. The second diameter is a 6.5mm chamber for the spring. The final diameter is the 7mm tap diameter for the M8 thread that holds the end cap in place. The thread was tricky to tap for a few reasons. Firstly I didn't yet have a tap follower so I had to constantly adjust the tailstock to keep the tap straight. Secondly, I don't have a tap wrench large enough for this tap, but short enough to swing full circle above the lathe, so I had to make do with a small swing space available. Thirdly, I can't lock the lathe spindle, so I had to use a wrench to hold the collet chuck. Thank you. 
Fortunately, it didn't need to be tapped very deep. With the thread cut, I moved on to a new piece of stock to make the end cap. This needs to be screwed in firmly but undone by hand, so I started by knurling the outer diameter. This is my first ever knurl and I screwed it up pretty badly. The most major mistake was failing to tram the tool post. Fortunately this was extremely obvious by looking at the result of the first pass, so I stopped and set the tool post to 90 degrees. The second mistake was failing to use cutting oil. With the tool post straight and the cutting oil applied, things went much better. I'm pretty happy with the result. I then turned down a short length to 8mm for the thread. The final step before threading was the same 5mm through hole. I drilled a little deeper than necessary to make parting off easier. As before, I'm using a thread technique I learned from Joe Pye. The lathe is run in reverse, with the feed screw moving the carriage away from the chuck. This allows the lathe to run much faster without fear of crashing, and also allows the thread to be cut very snug against the top of the cap. I used the thread tool itself to cut the starting groove as close as possible to the shoulder. Out of shot, I set up an indicator to mark this starting position, so I could return the carriage to exactly this spot. I set the compound to match the 60 degree thread angle, as usual for single pointing. I then found the outer diameter using the tool and ran it backward and forward to clear the burr from the edge of the groove. First scratch pass was pretty slow, but everything seemed to go smoothly.
After a few passes I got more confident and increased the lathe RPM so the insert would cut more cleanly. Towards the final pass I start to see a problem. At my carriage start position the tool point was no longer aligned with the starting groove. Advancing the compound at 60 degrees has caused it to lose alignment as the thread progresses. Looking back at Joe Pye's video he does it with the compound at 90 degrees for exactly this reason. If I'm going to use this technique with the compound at 60 degrees I need to progressively adjust the carriage start position to compensate. It's a pretty good fit and sits slugly against the end. With the thread cut to depth I return the compound to the starting position and run the tool along the original diameter to remove any protruding burrs. Finally I face the top of the cap to remove parting tool marks with it screwed into the tool body. The tool body is now complete and this is probably enough for one video. Look out for part 2 when I'll show you making the reversible tool tip.